a raccoon, and a kawati. One hails from North America, the other from the South. Technically members of the same extended family, they're not exactly a pair you'd peg as besties. And yet, here at Ark Wildlife Park in the East Midlands of England, they found sanctuary in one another. Roscoe the raccoon arrived here not too long ago. Raccoons aren't native to Britain, but until 2016 they were legally sold as exotic pets. Totally unsuited to life in captivity, Roscoe has spent most of his days condemned to a small cage in a pet shop. Unsurprisingly, his confined life has been incredibly damaging to his mental health. And when he came into us, straight away we saw he would pace out sort of the, uh, the dimensions of his previous enclosure, despite the fact he was now in a much bigger environment. The reports we've had, the enclosure he had was not ideal. It was too small for him. This pacing behavior is known as stereotyping, when an animal does the same thing repeatedly with no obvious goal. Raccoons need lots of mental stimulation. If they're deprived of that, just like us, they will get mental health issues. When Roscoe was placed with the other raccoons at the rescue, they were not kind to the poor guy. Because he's stereotyping, he's pacing back and forth. Other raccoons didn't know what to make of him. And unfortunately, their default setting was to bully him. This confused little soul was in desperate need of warm, compassionate company. Who could understand what he was going through? Well, Rio the Kawati, for one, also a rescue from the exotic pet trade, this friendly little fellow was rejected by a couple females he was housed with. Unfortunately, they just wouldn't accept him. They picked on him, they tried to keep him away from the food, and it just wasn't working out. So Rio was in the same boat. Now, raccoons and kawatis are genetically close, but their personalities? Worlds apart. In the wild, kawatis are social animals. They live in groups of up to 30 individuals and forage together in search of bugs or fruit. But male raccoons are typically loners, so it was anyone's guess how they'd work out as roommates. Rio, being the confident animal, went straight up to Roscoe and started to investigate him. Roscoe, on the other hand, very shy, obviously never met a Kawati before, was sort of like, whoa, what's this going on? And for the first few days, he retreated into his shell a little bit. But Rio has been very persuasive, hasn't given up on him. To keep Roscoe's mind stimulated, and to keep him from pacing, Jamie's created some food puzzles for the two. His plan works for a few minutes, but before long, Roscoe's back to his back and forth. But this time, his roomie knows just what to do. Just like they would when they were youngsters, playing with their litter mates. They're chasing around after each other, they're jumping on each other. It's just typical rough housing. Common threads have now strengthened to become the ties that bind. And as you can clearly tell, the touch of this compassionate Kawati has this once blue raccoon over the moon. When Roscoe first came into us, he didn't really want to interact with the world around him. It was just persistence on Rio's part, just play, that eventually broke down Roscoe's reluctance to engage their best buddies. Rio's got a playmate and Roscoe's got his own therapy animal who's helping him overcome his stereotyping. So that's really fantastic to see, and he's made such fantastic progress. 